today's episode, we're going to tackle one of the most popular topics, one of the biggest questions I get literally on a daily basis on Instagram DMs, on the chat, on email. You guys are always asking me how to stay consistent with your content creation. And today I'm going to give you three strategies that can really help you not just level up your content, but show up consistently and without wasting a ton of time or feeling like content is this thing that has a hold on you or that you're running on again content hamster wheel and can never get off so i'm really excited about it we're gonna dive right in coming up and so let's dive right in with the first strategy guys we have to reframe how we think about content creation as entrepreneurs and because we run a show for entrepreneurs right it's in the name the business lounge podcast um it can be really confusing and i've talked about this at length before we're about to do a second episode where i dive right into this topic of influencers versus entrepreneurs um how each of those two categories can play their game when it comes to content creation and win. And I see entrepreneurs really struggling with this idea of creating content that that feels so perfect and so polished that only someone who is doing content full time as a creator or as an influencer actually can invest that amount of time into creating that content so that it looks that perfect. And so if you are really in the same boat where you're really struggling with this, my first thing would be create content in a format that you can stick to. Create content in a format that you can stick to. And the reality is if you hate writing, if you hate writing, whether that's you're writing a blog or you're creating like long Instagram captions, or maybe you are creating content for a medium that is mostly text heavy, like maybe you're on medium.com, right? And you just go and write a bunch of articles, or maybe you're posting LinkedIn articles and you hate it. It's probably not the, the thing for you. It's probably not going to be something that you stick with. And so you really just want to find a medium that you can stick to and that your audience enjoys consuming. And that is getting a little bit harder, right? As we see more and more of this influence with TikTok and short video, and now we have all these platforms kind of exploding um, on into onto the scenes. I, I saw that this week, um, Elon, as he acquires Twitter, was actually hinting at creating a competing product for YouTube that competes against YouTube. So I assume it's going to be video heavy and it can be really overwhelming to try to find that fit, right? What do you really enjoy creating and are your customers consuming it that way? So that can be, again, a little bit challenging, but I want to, I want to encourage you to find something that you're really, really good at. You do not need to be the best at Instagram content and or not even let's let's talk about one segment of instagram content you don't need to be the best at reels and be the best podcaster and be the best youtuber and be the best blog writer all you need is to dominate one format one platform and do it really really well so what is that content medium that you can stick to or that you can learn to enjoy so that you can stick to it for me i'll tell you right away writing is not my deal I enjoy writing. It's not that I don't enjoy writing. I don't enjoy writing all the time. It's kind of a drag. And I love writing copy. I I like writing conversion copy. I like sending emails and doing all that. But when it comes to my content, it's just not my thing. (laughs) And I'm not good at it. I'm not a good writer. My husband and business partner, Chris, he's a phenomenal writer. Like he actually um, has a communications degree and he could write all day long. Like to him, writing a book is like the most exciting thing. To me, it's like I, I, I'm pulling hairs. Like that's not my medium. I love video. That's I love video and I love audio. That's why I have a podcast that also has a video component to it. I have a video podcast and that's my platform. That's where I feel comfortable. That's where I feel like I can shine. But it wasn't always this way. It was really challenging for me at first to get used to the camera. It still is. It's still a little weird. I was actually talking to one of our coaching clients inside of the Business Knowledge Coaching and that program and she was 
sharing how she just she feels a little uncomfortable. It's it's a stretch for her to go from filming her podcast audio only to actually going in and also filming video. And I told her, hey, I feel the exact same way. I totally understand what you mean. For me, it's so much easier to just pull out my camera and film a video for Instagram. I feel so much more comfortable than even filming this podcast with the camera here. And I've been doing that for 10 years. So practice definitely makes perfect, but it doesn't mean you're never going to feel uncomfortable, right? Or that you have to get to a point to to where, you know, it's just this like gift that you've been given. I don't have the gift of being on camera. I am not the most charismatic person. I'm also not the most engaging person on camera, I don't think. And um, it's okay. Like it still works for me. This medium still works for me. I don't have to be, you know, the Peter McKinnon of, if you follow Peter McKinnon, you know what I'm talking about. He's an amazing videographer and photographer, but I don't have to be the Peter, the Peter McKinnon for, you know, entrepreneurs who want to learn how to grow profitable businesses through content creation, because that's just not my shindig. That's not, that's just not my thing. And so you want to find your thing and realize that as you get more comfortable with it, you're going to make it your own. And so consistency starts with a format that you can stick to. So can you stick to recording your podcast episode every week? That's usually one of the easiest things that you can do in terms of building audience um, with a format that doesn't really take a lot of editing, doesn't take a lot of time with writing, but is still really powerful. Now, is podcasting the right place for your audience? That's something you want to ask yourself, right? Sometimes you're better off going with YouTube. Sometimes you're better off with a blog. And so you want to play with that. But ideally, if you want to stay consistent with your content, you got to do a format that you actually enjoy. Otherwise, it's not going to happen, friend. It is not going to happen. And then the second thing I would say is you want to tighten up your content creation workflow. You want to tighten up that content creation workflow. And so what does that mean? Well, it means that you actually pay attention to the amount of time that you're spending creating your content. And so my husband, Chris, amazing guy, if you didn't know already, <laughs> I think he's great. Um, of course, I'm biased, but I don't know. He, he's pretty cool. So he, he developed this uh method or this process called the paid method. And he really just takes a lot of his coaching clients um, and now our coaching clients through this method where they're tracking what they're doing every single day and every single task gets assigned a particular time. And he has an entire way of doing it digitally. But essentially, you want to time yourself. How much time are you spending creating your content? How much time are you spending proofreading the blog, writing the blog, outlining the blog, creating graphics for it, filming the video, posting the video, creating, you know, uh, smaller content pieces, going on stories? All of that is important. Take inventory. Really, that's what it looks like. And so for one of our students, she was telling me, hey, it's taking me an hour and 30 minutes just to outline my blog, half an hour to proofread proofread it, one hour to create graphics and style it, one hour to create lead magnets. And I ended up spending over six hours all in all to create one blog. I could spend that time when I only had two clients, but now that I'm growing, I'm running out of hours in the day. What am I doing wrong? And so listen, if this is you, I, I so understand where you're at. I cannot tell you as a former social media manager, how overwhelming it was for me to handle multiple clients at once and have to produce long form and short form content. It was a lot. And then starting my own business, having to do it for myself was also really challenging because I had to decide, right, am I going to fulfill my service contract today, right? Am I going to fulfill the actual uh, delivery of my service for my clients or am I going to spend that time working on my own stuff. And so that usually meant that I was spending my weekends creating my own content for my business. And then during the week I was servicing clients and that was really tough. I wish I would have had these tips beforehand because over time out of necessity, I had to develop ways to actually be more efficient and be more effective. So always be thinking, how can you save some time? How can you save time with your current workflow? Tightening up your content workflow, really looking at what is each step entail and how can you optimize it is gonna save you so much time. So for me also, like what tools can, can you bring into the mix that will also save you some time? For the client that we were talking about, she she was sharing, right, like how her struggle was writing the content. And I said, hey, you know, 
it took me a long time to outline my blogs initially, but after a while, I started bullet pointing my main points first, and then I would write the intro and the outro. And that actually shrunk the time that I was spending writing my blog and outlining the whole thing where I could go from outline to the full blog post, you know, maybe it's the second or third draft, but not the full proofread blog post, but the full blog post, the written thing in 20 minutes. And that was huge. I got to the point where I could do that. Now, over time, I've been able to shorten a lot of those processes as well. So now it takes me 10 minutes to outline a podcast episode, maybe 15, but usually about 10 minutes to outline a podcast episode. And then I can go and film it and spend 20 to 30 minutes. And now I filmed an entire show for 45 minutes. And that's my investment for the week. So it really looks different for different formats and for different people. And also, it depends on whether or not you actually have um a system to get all that content produced and published. So what is the steps? What do those steps look like, right? You outline maybe your YouTube video, or maybe you start even before then, as you should be with research. You can sit down one day and instead of sitting down, doing research about what you're going to write today or what you're going to film about today, you can have a day where you sit down for an hour and you really do some research. You go into one of our favorite tools is Uber Suggest. We'll go into Uber Suggest, look at keywords, and essentially the ideas are all there for you. You do not need to like come up with all these creative and you know super fancy ideas. You just answer the questions that people are asking online. It's really that simple. So you can create a list of ideas for your next couple long form content episodes in a couple minutes, maybe 60 minutes, right? Maybe less than that. You could literally have 20, 30, 40 ideas all mapped out with the appropriate keywords. And then instead of having to sit down and think about what you're going to create that day, you already have those titles lined up and then you can schedule them out and say, okay, this is the title for week number one. This is the title for week number two, week number three, week number four. And now you have a whole month of ideas to kick off with. And next you can go in and say, okay, So I know that I'm going to be researching, then I'm going to be outlining or bullet pointing my content piece. And after that, I'm going to start producing it, right? So if you're going to write, if you're going to record, or if you're going to film, totally up to you, whatever format it is. But that's usually, you know, the setup. That's how you time it. Then you want to ask yourself, how can I film faster? How can I record faster? How can I write faster? And so for me, on having a good tech setup where I could just sit down on my desk and press record and not have to adjust the lighting and not have to play and get finicky with the camera and all the settings and not have to get the background perfectly set up because I have a standalone background was something that took me 10 years to figure out, but I finally did it and it's transformed the way that I create content. It's so much easier for me to create now that I can just sit down on you know one place um, and film. For you, it might be like, hey, I don't have a dedicated office or I don't have a dedicated film area. That's totally cool, right? I filmed on my computer with a uh, webcam for many, many years, and I also use my smartphone. So what I did was I knew that I could just plug my camera in. I could literally just set it up on a few books on my desk, and that was my filming station. So it doesn't need to be overcomplicated. It just means that you're really streamlining your recording and production process so that it doesn't feel like this massive drag because you have your stack of books that you can literally just pop your laptop on. You have your camera, your webcam that you can just plug in and boom, you're off to the races. Maybe you're recording and you have your microphone and maybe a recorder or you have your microphone linked up to your laptop and that's your setup and you don't have to worry about figuring out tech and equipment and all that stuff that might be getting in the way of you actually producing your content. And then the last point um, in the strategy is to think about what assets can you create that will save you time. So having templates is a really good idea. So for us, 
we always use, you know, graphic templates to create our blog graphics or our YouTube thumbnails. We're not creating anything from scratch, really. We're just duplicating something that we already did. We're changing a few elements, popping in a new image, and off we go. So it's the same thing. Can you have a blog template saved on your WordPress site that you can just pop in and it's not you starting from scratch every time. You know, we do that here. Everything has a template. My podcast outlines have a template. Uh, our YouTube description is a template. Our email newsletter is a template. It doesn't mean that you're going to send the same content and it be repetitive, but you don't start from scratch with every asset. So it saves you a ton of time and you can do the same thing with micro content. Do you have a template for your carousel posts on Instagram? Do you have real templates? Do you have story templates? We have all of that. It's our content kit. And it's such an important piece of what we do. It just saves us a ridiculous amount of time. Speaking of our content kit, I wanted to introduce our sponsor for today, which is our brand new content class that I'm so freaking excited to tell you about. So this content class came as a result of so many amazing pieces of feedback that we collected. We actually interviewed over 400 of you and you told us that you were having a lot of struggles with creating content consistently. So we said, hey, we're going to actually create a free masterclass. It's called Five Secrets of Creating Irresistible Content Consistently, even if you're super busy and without being on all the time. You're going to get my exact five-step system to nail your content creation once and for all, grow an audience of buyers, not just followers, and show up unapologetically as an entrepreneur without spending all your time glued to your devices. So if that's something you're interested in, definitely come over to smartcontentclass.com. That's smartcontentclass.com. You're going to get five content creation mistakes that are likely keeping you stuck, overwhelmed, and unmotivated, and how to avoid them so that content becomes easy, enjoyable, profitable, and fun. We're also going to be talking about why people aren't resonating with your content or buying your products, programs, or services, and three simple tweaks you can make right now to flip the script and create magnetic content that connects and sells seamlessly. You're also going to get the exact blueprint you should be following for your specific business model. And y'all, this one's really important so that you're always clear and confident on the best way to show up online for your business instead of modeling everyone else. And finally, you're going to get a proven process to transform your content creation so you're never creating content on a whim or wasting precious hours of your day that you should be spending closing and servicing more clients and customers and the exact content formula businesses like yours leverage every day to attract more engagement, leads, and sales with content without being perceived as an influencer or needing a massive audience. I am so incredibly excited about this content class. I'll go to over to smartcontentclass.com and sign up for the class right away. All right. I hope to see you inside. Moving on to our last tip is to get some help, my friend. Get some help. It can be pretty intense to go at content creation on your own. And of course, you want to be smart about how you go about bringing on help. But I remember spending 14 hours one week editing one of my YouTube videos and I I think it kind of broke me in a way. <laughs> I was like, this is it. I am so done. I'm hiring an editor. I am not going to edit my own YouTube videos. And that was back in 2017. And I am very proud to say I have not edited a video since then. And the reason for that is because I can't run. And listen, I'm not saying that I'm better than everyone else or that I, you know, I don't know, that I have some like mystical power. Some people get very upset when I say that I don't edit my own videos and I have no idea why. I'm an entrepreneur. I am not a YouTuber. Okay. I am not a YouTuber. I'm running a real business and it is very time consuming and it pulls my attention in a million different directions. I lead a team of people who need me to be present. I cannot actually say that 15 hours of content editing for me is worth the investment. And the reason for that isn't because I'm not trying to put in the work. I have put in the work, okay? I've been on YouTube for a few years now. I created hundreds of episodes. That's not the point. The point is I can spend time doing things in my business that are a higher return. And those are the things that I've positioned myself to do. So what are the things that I only I can do in my business? 
I'm the one who can record my podcast episodes and my YouTube videos, right? No one else on my team could do that unless I bring Chris on or Brian on and they will share their own insight and know-how, which is awesome. But essentially, if there's something that I can outsource that someone else is better at doing and can absolutely do in a way that is really, really high value for a company, I'm going to outsource that. So Video editing was one of the first things that I went ahead and outsourced, but keep in mind, you got to be smart about this, right? I had already hired myself, so I was working full-time in my business, and if you're inside the business launch, you know that we recommend that you don't start building a team until you're at least at the breakthrough stage. The reason for that is the hustle stage is the hardest part, and you can totally outsource things and work with people on a per-project basis, but if you haven't hired yourself yet, then you can totally just outsource on websites like Fiverr and on Upwork small tasks. I started doing that before I hired a full-time editor. I was actually just sending videos out to be edited on Upwork and I got a really good rate because I already had clients and I was profitable. I could invest a little bit of my profit in making my time actually stretch. And so what that allowed me to do was I could spend more time building courses, servicing clients, creating programs, leveling up my marketing strategy, and creating more content so that I wouldn't be stuck editing for 15 hours a video that took me an hour to film. I could actually go in and create, if someone else is spending the the 15 hours, I could go in and create four videos every week and then have that all scheduled out for the month, spend the rest of the other three weeks working on my business, come back and do it all over again. And that's exactly what I'm teaching you in this brand new content class. I want you to start thinking smarter. There's a reason why we named it Smart Content Class. Entrepreneurs are trying to do too much. We just, we, we, there's just too much on our shoulders. It's a lot. And so I don't feel like, um, most people understand that, right? Influencers don't understand that. Content creators don't understand that. And it has nothing to do with them. There's nothing wrong with them. It's just, I love that they're doing their thing and they spend that time in their creation, in their production and perfecting their content because that's their business model. But for entrepreneurs who are selling services and products and programs, we have a totally different ball game that we play. And so getting smarter about how we play it is absolutely key. So I I just want to give you hope no matter where you're at in your journey, whether you're in the validation stage and you're trying to figure out what kind of business idea to launch in the world, you're in the hustle stage, just trying to make it happen, breakthrough, you've already hired yourself, working full time in your business, profit, you're building a team, you're getting ready for scale or all the way up in scale. I just wanted to give you hope. Content creation doesn't have to be this like incredibly time consuming thing. You can build a team around you, even if it's just a few hours a week. My first virtual assistant, um, we only worked together for five hours every week because that's what I could afford. And that was what I hired her for. And so slowly over time, that opened up my schedule enough that I could actually create more money generating um, activities and projects. And I could focus in on growing the business while still building my content, while still building my email list, while still building up my traffic. So that when I did want to do a big push and make, you know, a a significant amount of money with maybe a launch or some kind of promotion, I had the audience to do that, but I wasn't the one who was doing all the things all the time. And I did that for a period of time. Okay. There was a time where it was me, myself, and I, and I was working 14 to 16 hour days, burning the candle at both ends. And it cost me greatly, not just with my health, but also it kept me small as an entrepreneur because I wasn't growing fast enough because it was just me and I was putting everything on my shoulders. So I just want to give you hope again. You know, Chris and I, um, we spent less than two hours a week in content creation and we run three podcasts now. We run two YouTube channels, four combined Instagram accounts. We have both Facebook pages and Telegram. And what else do we have? Pinterest. There's there's a lot of platforms. We are able to only spend that amount of time because we have positioned ourselves to be the talent in our business instead of trying to do everything ourselves. And that was a process. I'm not saying that you're going to get there 
two, you know, two weeks from now. But I just want to give you a model and something to look forward to so that you don't have to feel the pressure of being all the things in your business. So I hope that this episode was helpful. I hope that it gave you a lot to think about when it comes to creating content consistently. I just want to encourage you. There's so much opportunity out there, guys. Content is here to stay. We might as well master it in a way that feels right for us, in a way that works for us, in a way that helps us show up confident and own it without feeling like we have to fit a particular mold online or else. Like I'm just I'm just here to combat that and I hope that you're here for it. I hope that you're saying a hallelujah and praise the Lord um, over there because I sure am. And on that note, we have a God-given responsibility to multiply the gifts that God has given us and use them to serve other people. And that extends to everything that you do. If you're so busy trying to do marketing that you can't service your clients, there's a disconnect. If you're so busy servicing your clients that you do not spend time marketing your business and exponentially getting more visibility so that you can help more people, there's a disconnect there. We have to figure out a way to do both and do it well without striving, without feeling like we got to, you know, constantly be on the content hamster wheel, without feeling like we're constantly hustling, but doing it in a way that really allows us to reach that God-given potential um, and fulfill the assignment that he's given us. If you're a believer, then you believe that, right? Like that's something that we share. And if you're not, it's still important. And I hope that it inspires you. So again, I hope that you enjoyed this episode. I love you. I'm going to get back to some tea and doing some important things here in the business. I got a team meeting coming up, but I love you guys. I hope that you truly enjoyed it. And if you did, make sure to come over to smartcontentclass.com. I'm telling you, the class is going to be mind-blowing. You're going to get so many aha moments. Um, and I promise it's not this big pitch where I'm just selling the whole time. You're going to get serious takeaways. Bring notes, bring pen and paper, something to write down because you're going to get a serious blueprint for creating content consistently without it feeling like it's totally overwhelming. I love you. Un beso. And I will see you on the inside. Bye for now.